Good morning everyone and welcome to morning prayer for today, Thursday the 8th of October. It's lovely to have you with us this morning. Wasn't it a beautiful day yesterday? Weren't we lucky? It was so nice to see the sun after all that rain. I don't know if we're going to be as lucky today though if the weather forecasts anything to go by but we'll keep our fingers crossed. So as we come into our time of prayer Let's just take a moment of quiet. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. God, be gracious to us and bless us, and make his face to shine upon us, that your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations rejoice and be glad, for you will judge the peoples righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Then shall the earth bring forth her increase, and God our own God will bless us and all God will bless us and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Now, the night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and one mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Now, our psalm for today is Psalm 78, verses 1 to 39. Hear my teaching, O my people. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will pour forth mysteries from old, such as we have heard and known, which our forebears have told us. We will not hide from their children, but will recount to generations to come the praises of the Lord and his power, and the wonderful works he has done. He laid a solemn charge on Jacob, and made it a law in Israel, which he commanded them to teach their children, that the generations to come might know, and the, gen and the children yet unborn, that they in turn might tell it to their children so that they might put their trust in God and not forget the deeds of God, but keep his commandments and not be like their forebears, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation whose heart was not steadfast and whose spirit was not faithful to God. The people of Ephraim, armed with the bow, turned back in the day of battle they did not keep the covenant of God and refused to walk in his law. They forgot what he had done and the wonders he had shown them. For he did marvellous things in the sight of their forebears in the land of Egypt, in the field of Zoan. He divided the sea and let them pass through. He made the waters stand still in a heap. He led them with a cloud by day and all the night through with a blaze of fire. He split the hard rocks in the wilderness, and he gave them drink as from the great deep. He brought streams out of the rock, and made water gush out of the rivers. Yet for all this they sinned more against him, and defied the Most High in the wilderness. They tested God in their hearts, and demanded food for their craving. 
they spoke against God and said, Can God prepare a table in the wilderness? He struck the rock indeed, so that the waters gushed out and the streams overflowed. But can he give bread or provide meat for his people? When the Lord heard this, he was full of wrath. A fire was kindled against Jacob, and his anger went out against Israel. For they had no faith in God, and put no trust in his saving help. So he commanded the clouds above, and opened the doors of heaven. He rained down upon them manna to eat, and gave them the grain of heaven. Mortals ate the bread of angels. He sent them food in plenty. He caused the east wind to blow in the heavens and let out the south wind by his might. He rained flesh upon them as thick as dust and winged fowl like the sand of the sea. He let it fall in the midst of their camp and round their tents. They ate and were well filled for he gave them what they desired. But they did not stop their craving. Their food was still in their mouths when the anger of God rose against them and slew their strongest men and felled the flower of Israel. But for all this, they sinned yet more and put no faith in his wonderful works. So he brought their days to an end like a breath and their years in sudden terror. Whenever he slew them, they would not seek him. They would repent and, shake, and earnestly seek for God. They remembered that God was their rock and the Most High God their Redeemer. Yet they did but flatter him with their mouth and disassembled with their tongue. Their heart was not steadfast towards him neither were they faithful to his covenant. But he was so merciful that he forgave their misdeeds and did not destroy them. Many a time he turned back his wrath and did not suffer his whole displeasure to be roused. For he remembered that they were but flesh, a wind that passes by and does not return. God, our Deliverer, as you led our ancestors through the wilderness, so lead us through the wilderness of this world, that we may be saved through Christ for ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Well, we have two scripture readings today. Um, the first is 2 Kings, chapter 1, verses 2 to 17, and the second is Acts 24, verses 1 to 23. I'm going to read the Acts reading. Um, if you'd like to read the uh, Kings one, please do so um, after the uh, morning prayer or in your own time. Acts 24, beginning at first uh, one. Five days later, the high priest Ananias came down with some elders and an attorney, a certain Tertullus, and they reported their case against Paul to the governor. When Paul had been summoned, Tertullus began to accuse him, saying, Your Excellency, because of you we have long enjoyed peace and reform, and reforms have been made for this people because of your foresight. We welcome this in every way and everywhere with utmost gratitude. But to detain you no further, I beg you to hear us briefly with your customary graciousness. We have in fact found this man a pestilent fellow, an agitator among the Jews throughout the world and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes he even tried to profane the temple, and so we seized him. By examining him yourself, you will be able to learn from him concerning everything which we accuse him. 
The Jews also joined in the charge by asserting that all this was true. When the governor motioned him to speak, Paul replied, I cheerfully make my defence, knowing that for many years you have been a judge over this nation. As you can find out, it is not more than twelve days since I went up to worship in Jerusalem. They did not find me disputing with anyone in the temple, or stirring up a crowd either in the synagogues or throughout the city. Neither can they prove to you the charge that they now bring against me, but this I admit to you, that according to the way which they call a sect, I worship the God of our ancestors, believing everything laid down according to the law or written in the prophets. I have a hope in God, a hope that they themselves also accept. For there will be a resurrection of both the righteous and the unrighteous. Therefore, I do my best always to have a clear conscience towards God and all people. Now after some years, I came to bring alms to my nation and to, other, to offer sacrifices. While I was doing this, they found me in the temple, completing the rite of purification, without any crowd or disturbance. But there were some Jews from Asia. They ought to be here before you to make an accusation, if they have anything against me. Or let these men here tell you what crime they found when I stood before the council. Unless it was this one sentence that I called out while standing before them. It is about the resurrection of the dead that I am on trial before you today. But Felix, who was rather well informed about the way, adjourned the hearing with the comment, When Lysias the Tribune comes down, I will decide your case. Then he ordered the centurion to keep him in custody, but to let him have some liberty and not to prevent any of his friends from taking care of his needs. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. Fear not, I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. I have called you by name, you are mine. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. Let's pray. Lord, as we come to the beginning of a new day, renew our hearts with your strength and purpose. Guide us in our daily tasks that we do your will in every way. We pray for a world which struggles to live justly and in peace. We pray for those who have to search daily for food or strive to find clean water. We think of those whose lives are cut short by disease or violence, and those who have fled their homes in fear. We pray for those who meet persecution and torture with dignity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the church. Lord, we pray today for your church, carrying a gospel of forgiveness and freedom, which is so much needed in our world. Give us the courage and willingness to be your witness in ways that are generous and respectful. Fill us with your love so that the world may believe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
We pray for the health and welfare of our community, for the well-being of this our church community, that we may be a house of faith where people are welcomed. We pray also for the social community, that you would make it a place where all can flourish and all are cared for. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those whom this day will be difficult, for those in hospital and for those who are at home, those struggling with despair or depression. Comfort and heal those who are suffering. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are mourning the loss of a loved one. Be with them in their sorrow and comfort them in their loss. May they feel your love and your peace in their lives today and in the days to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And our collect for today. Almighty God, you have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless till they find rest in, your, in you. Pour your love into our hearts and draw us to yourself. And so bring us last to your heavenly city, where we shall see you face to face. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, thank you all for joining us this morning. I hope you all have a lovely day, whatever you're doing. And let's hope the rain does stay off. So, be safe, everyone, and stay well and stay in touch with each other. Goodbye.